What's going on guys? It's been a minute since I've made one of these, but I just wanted to catch you guys up on what's been going on in my love life. I'm fresh off getting stood up on a sushi date, and you know what they say, nothing sparks creativity like eating a bunch of raw fish alone in your car. So let's get right into it. At the end of last summer, I met this kid from Boston who was out in California visiting with some of his friends. He told me that he was DL and he couldn't be open about any of the things he was doing. Cool, I'm about to date the 2010 Steve. I'm the type of person that gets an erection when somebody tells me to go f myself. So I thought this would be perfect. I knew it was a bad idea dating someone who was in the closet. It felt like a step backwards. But at the same time, I didn't want to judge him for where he was in his journey. And I was also happy that he could at least be himself when he was with me. He was a flashy guy, Louis Vuitton luggage, all his clothes were Gucci or Burberry. I'm like, are you sure people don't know you're gay? There's an air of mystery surrounding this guy. He'd fly back and forth across the country every other week. He'd come out here, wine and dine me, and he'd always pick up the bill. Possibly because he thought that was a gesture of masculinity, but more likely because I'd sit in the bathroom until the restaurant closed. But regardless, he had all of this money with no real explanation as to where it came from. He really wanted to be the dominant person in the relationship. The first day we met, he asked me to call him daddy. I'm gonna call you by your name, now in theaters. He'd be like, seriously babe, I want you to call me daddy. I'm older than you, and you're still in the closet, so I'm gonna call you pussy. Happy Father's Day. He's gonna punish me for this video. I still developed feelings for him, but any time he'd be sweet and romantic, it was always short-lived. We'd be lying in bed together and he'd be like, Babe, are you glad I came and visited? And I'd say, of course. Then he'd be like, good slut. The more I got to know him, the less I trusted him. He made a lot of claims he just couldn't back up. I attend Harvard Law School, I know Katy Perry, I love myself. He even lied about his own name. It got to the point where I wouldn't even ask this kid what time it was. One weekend, he wanted to go down to San Diego to check out the gay scene. I had already noticed that this kid had a wandering eye, but I'm not an optometrist, so I reluctantly complied. So we're in the club, and it only takes about 30 minutes before he starts dancing with some other dude trying to make me jealous. I ignore it for a while until I see him pick this guy off the ground and start grinding all over him. That's it. I already had had two O'Doul's, so I knew I wasn't going to remember this night anyways, so I just went for it. I shoved that little Hillcrest twink to the side, I got in daddy's face and said, I'm done with you. You're an insecure little bitch and a liar. Good luck getting back to LA on your own. There's a bunch of people watching at this point. Security is just about to separate the both of us when he yells, You can't lock me out of the hotel. I need my stuff. I have a Givenchy t-shirt in there. At that moment, time had stopped. There was a deafening silence. I took a deep breath, turned to him and said, congratulations, you just came out of the closet. A few months later, I started talking to this Puerto Rican boxer from Long Beach. I could already tell he didn't have much going on upstairs, judging by his struggles with your, but he was just such a bro, I couldn't stay away. What I'm trying to say is, I'm willing to overlook that extra chromosome if you know how to throw a football. So we meet at a Mexican restaurant in Long Beach and he pulls up and he's like, hey bro, I got some moonshine in my car, do you wanna take a few swigs before we go in? How do I say no in Spanish? What are we, in high school? Besides, I had some hand sanitizer on the drive down here, so I'm good. So we're sitting down getting to know each other and I can quickly tell there's a huge disparity in intelligence. So by the time I finish reading him the menu, I'm ready to tap out. Small talk continues and then he asks me, do you have any brothers? I'm like, yeah, two of them. And he's like, did you guys ever like jerk off together? <sighs> it's like, of course we did, but you don't bring that stuff up on a date. Then the mood takes a turn. He's like, bro, I'm just really excited that assisted suicide is legal in California. How many times have you been hit in the head? The waitress comes by, I'm like, we'll have two margaritas, salt on mine, Zoloft on his. After dinner was over, we actually had a really nice romantic walk along the water. Just kidding, he pressured me into hotbox in my car and I had to immediately drive home an hour looking like Stephen Hawking. It was a cold and rainy day in Los Angeles, which meant I'd be spending the day in bed eating calzones. I was on Tinder swiping away with my greasy fingers when I ended up matching with this guy. I was really on the fence with this kid. It was one of those situations where his proximity to me made him more desirable. Of course, when I get over there, I'm immediately disappointed. I even tried to pull the old, hey, I gotta call him to work real quick. I was outside pretending to be on the phone when I started to feel bad. I decided to go back in and give him a shot. So we're hanging out talking and he's like, do you like Kirby Enthusiasm? I'm like, yeah. Well, what's your favorite episode? Uh, I like the one where he dates the woman in a wheelchair. What other ones? What's your favorite season? What is this, 21 questions? I didn't come here for a quiz, dude. So he puts on a Curb episode, and while we're watching it, I notice that he is pounding fruit punch. Not a cocktail, just the punch. 
I don't know if it was because he was nervous, but glass after glass, this kid looked like the high fructose Marilyn Monroe, a true Hawaiian dunce. By the time the episode's over with, I'm ready to throw in the towel, the paper one for his mouth. As I'm heading towards the door, he frantically cuts me off and says, dude, before you leave, can I please just eat your ass, dude? Please, man, please just let me eat your ass, dude, please. I can't think of a more desperate request. You know that thing that pushes out all the vile waste your body doesn't want? I wanna make out with it. I actually had a moment of clarity and I turned to him and said, dude, you're not this person. You're acting out of anxiety. You've cut yourself off from all your creative power and displaced that onto sex. Love yourself, man. No one else is gonna be able to give you that. And the whole way home, I could not stop thinking about how stained my butt cheeks were gonna be.